Hey everyone. So in this video, a little bit of a different video for what we're going to do. I know a lot of people wish they could use no code tools better. And when I first started, I wish I could use no code tools as well. So I'm going to probably not even talk over this video and I'm just going to speed run setting up an automation uh, that is going to help us hopefully increase the open rate of a campaign that we're running. Um, we basically have 700 inboxes for a client and it's tough to discern in smart lead, which inboxes are healthy and which ones aren't. I mean, I can visually, but to do it at scale is a little bit tough. So I'm going to rip through it and try to do it as fast as I can using the API. And then we're going to add the best campaign, the best inboxes to a new campaign that we're going to launch. Word around the water cooler is smart lead is updating their API so that you can actually ping the accounts to see what their open rate is in the campaign. Uh, so this video, as an actual process might get, um, I don't know what well, smartly might release a better API pretty soon. Use this as more of a tutorial of how to set up no code tools, uh, very quickly. So let's jump in. We're just going to make a basic request. So we're done here. Pausing for my API key. All right, and then the only annoying thing that I can't show is in, in this, you just want to make sure that you parse the response because otherwise you're not going to be able to get anything back. Uh, and it's not going to be useful. Oops, it do easy. All right, the reason for my error is because I copied and pasted everything and I included the curl thing in it. So anyway, super easy fix. Cool. So we need this ID right here. This is the most important thing that we need for now. So we got it. Now we're going to send it to a Google sheet so we can manipulate the data. Oh, but I made a mistake here. This isn't how we need to do it. Um, in that array that I just showed you, there's tons of data. If we do this, it's just going to run. It's just going to add one thing. So we just need to add something. Oh, not a router. We need an iterator. And then that will be that. And then... We just need an example pushed over here. Great, so we probably got an example. So now we should get every, there's gonna be like 700 inboxes uh, in here and they should all be passing to the Google Sheet now. Oops, which they are. Okay. So now we're going to jump over to smart lead and you can see we're getting very low open rates and that's exactly what we're going to be solving for. So some of them are getting terrible open rates because of the provider that we're using to be completely honest. 
well, there's lots of reasons, but then the other ones are like getting so, so open rates. So while that's loading, what we need to do is we need to load all 800 inboxes and then we're going to grab it with instant data scraper. And now that we got it with instant data scraper, we'll push it over here. I don't know why I put it there. Then we've got open rate here. So what I like to do, and this is bounce. So we'll keep track of this. And then this is open. Now this is kind of messed up because it's in parentheses and um, this is just the way they do parentheses. It's like an accounting thing to swap that out. So then we're just going to hit this like this. Oh, I want it like this. See how we have a lot of healthy inboxes in here and some not so healthy. So we're going to draw a line in the sand and say like, ah, these bounce rates are crazy. That's a whole, this is a whole like fiasco of a mess on multiple different reasons. So we we'll want like, take everything like that, I think. And I'm just going to put this over here. And then I just want to make sure we can hit our goals. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now we're going to run this. Okay. So great. Now we have these inboxes. Now, why is this important? Because I needed to get the open rate of these inboxes, which you can't do with smart lead API as of right now. And then I needed the ID of the inboxes, which I also wasn't going to sit around and mess with. Now, for some reason, it paused here. Oh, what did we do? Write request per user. OK. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to, one, see if it runs again. So it is running. OK, but it's just going too fast. So this is what we're going to do. Add a module, set up tools, sleep. Number stuff. Seven hundred seconds. This is gonna take more than like ten minutes to do. Do I care? Yeah, that's fine. Let's run it. So now see how we have a bigger time in between. So hopefully we don't get that problem again. So now we're back to generating these and then these are the inboxes that we want. So now what we can do is we can do equals V lookup against this. Oh yeah, that, and then we'll go to our other sheet and then we'll say this, we're going to put two and then false. If you don't know how to V lookup works, it's like, I want to look up this data. This, whatever matches this from here. So the first thing I need to identify for the VLOOKUP is equals VLOOKUP and then parenthesis. And then I need to identify, this is the thing I want to look up. And then you have to put a comma and then you need to identify where do you want to look it up. And so then it, the where is always the leftmost column over here. And you say, I want you to find it in this leftmost column, which then you highlight it. Then you say, what column do you want to return if I do find it? So that's why you put two because it's one, two, and then you put false. And honestly, I don't know why you put false. I just, you could put true. And I think it's searching for like an exact match versus a fuzzy match and false is an exact match. So I never use true. So anyway, then you get it and then you're done. And so that's why we're doing this V look up here. So now, oh no. So now this is what we can do. So now we'll bring this down. Great. So a lot of them have NA still. And the reason why they have NA is just because it hasn't run over here. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take these email IDs and we're going to read up on how to add mailboxes, add email account to a campaign. This is what we want. Okay. Uh,
Great. So now we're just going to run this back in make.com. Um, so if you haven't used no code tools before, this is what I'm basically searching for is, uh, so this is the URL that we're going to be using as the endpoint. And so we're going to put that into the HTTP thing. So we'll start another make.com scenario. And so then we're just going to say HTTP and then we're going to make a request. And then, oh my gosh, this thing that says curl, that's what we're going to put, but we're not going to copy curl. Then we put this, we say that, then we're going to replace our API key here and the campaign ID here. Uh, I started a new email campaign. So we're going to use four, not the one we want. Google email accounts, boom. And then I won't put in my API key. So the other thing you need to look at is this is a post. So see how it's a post request right here. So we are going to, well, one will parse the response, but then two will make this a post request. Now, see how it says data here. Anytime it says data, this is a part of the body request. Now, one thing that sometimes will happen is there's like quotes around these brackets here. You don't actually take the quotes with you. So we're going to hit this. And our body type is going to be raw application JSON. I've never used anything other than application JSON. And now the only thing I want to check is to see if I can run this manually by itself. Hmm. And we don't actually want to here. This actually isn't going to be first. We actually need to add something. So we're actually going to put Google Sheets and we're going to put search rows. And then we actually need to take this for its own trip over here. Yeah, I knew we were going to get that username, ID. So we're going to have to rerun the VLOOKUP. Oh, whoops. So I didn't put a comma, so that's why the issue is happening. So then hit this, run this. Oh no, what did I do? Great, so now we have all this data. Hopefully we get more of it this time. Oh man, is this still running? All right, we'll get there, we'll get there. So now we have that, and now we're gonna go here. What's this called? Inbox testing swap. sheet three, right? Okay, then we're gonna run this module only. What are our errors? They resolve themselves. So we have all of these, right? All these bundles, very, very nice. So we want that ID. So we're gonna take this just going to put the ID in there for ourselves. Then I'm just going to do something fancy so we can talk about things a little bit better. That variable is our lead API B. So I'm just going to put my smart lead API key so we can have more of a conversation about these API calls. So now we have the campaign set up. And so now what we're going to try to do is we're going to see if this works manually one time. So we're going to come in here and we're going to grab this one and then we're going to run this module only. And I guess we'll hit this. And I didn't realize I had to set the smart lead API key. So let me pause. And then I can't show you this because we have our smart lead API key in here, but um, yeah, now we're, it, it worked essentially. We're all set. So now all we need to do is wait for all of these to be filled out and then we just have to hit go and we're good to go. We will get all of the best inboxes reassociated with the domain or with the campaign. Now, the only issue is, oh no, not the issue. One thing I just wanted to talk about is before we had to 
add an iterator and now we don't have an iterator and i just wanted to explain that when this comes back um see how when it comes back as data it's like bundle three bundle four bundle five and it's got all these bundles each row is a bundle and so that's why it doesn't make a difference and now it, it is giving so every time it's a bundle it knows that that's just what we need to be sending so one thing i do want to do is since it's got like 220 oh actually is that how many are in here yeah all right so it pulled 220 so that's fine i was just going to say we could also filter and search by only things that username is full for so we don't waste any credit but it's not going to happen so now we're done we can just sit back and relax and um now i just like i said i just need all of these to be filled out and we will be all set to run this workflow and then we'll get the top inboxes reassociated with the brand new campaign